So we heard it already. Um, if we, we see that uh, in additive manufacturing, we go from prototyping more and more to functional products. Um, we have therefore a lot of technology available and, and for plastics especially there are a lot of different materials uh, which all have their own properties and post-processing is always a key issue. Removing the brackets, the loose particles and the roughness, the stairs. So there are a lot of different uh, methods to, to reduce the roughness of the parts. Um, I, I show there manual polishing, bead blasting, vibrational polishing, solvent smoothing, vapor smoothing. I will go into detail in the next slide on that. Um, on the other hand, um, there's always, if you want to go to functional parts, you have an addition of functions. You mostly you want to have, uh, depending on the application, you want to have a color on the surface or you want to have uh, maybe something that's hydrophobic or hydrophilic or which is, is UV blocking. So there always has to be a functionalization. And that you can do with coatings or with, with metallization. Yeah. So if you look at the post-finishing of plastics, um, like I said, there are different technologies. Um, they all have their advantages and disadvantages. Manual polishing, that's the first one, and that's one that's used a lot. Um, it's, of course, it's a good uh, technology that's suitable for all uh, for all techniques, but it's time consuming, it's expensive because you need a lot of labor time. Um, it's, it's difficult for, for inner places and, and it's very difficult to do mass finishing, of course. If you look at bead blasting, um, bead blasting, there are a lot of different uh, particles that you can use going from mild to harsh, depending on the material that you are doing. Um, there are durable plastic beads. It could be optimized. Um, but that it also depends on the part size. If you have a lot of small parts, you can do it in an automated way, more or less. If you have large parts, it will be more difficult. The vibrational polishing or the tribal finishing, um, it's a very good technique because you can put a lot of different uh, materials into, into the, the system and it, it works on itself. It's, it's doing a uh, change of the roughness of the surface. Uh, the problem there is that uh, depending on the geometry, the material that you have, uh, the, the product shape, um, you need other material, other uh, products that are uh, other standing material. So for, for every product or every material, you really have to uh, select again which abrasives will I use, um, how will I do the processing parameters. So if you have a lot of different products, it's it, it takes a lot of time to have the, the right parameters for each uh, product. It's also very difficult to do uh, sensitive regions if you have very thin uh, lines like that, very thin shapes. And then we have the solvent um, vapor smoothing. It's a fast technology, as you can see here. Um, it's, it's a matter of minutes, um, but it's limited to, to some of uh, the plastics. So you just put it in a vapor, chemical vapor and the outer side is, is a little bit melted, uh, attacked by, chemically attacked. Um, it can reach inner areas and there are already industrial systems available that can do that. But also there you have to watch out with thin flat pieces that can go uh, warping. Um, if you have imperfections in the material because you make a very high gloss surface, it will show very, very strongly afterwards. Um, <coughs> and also you have the safety and the eye environmental issues of course because you're working with solvents that you vaporize or dip. What, um, yeah, these are some, uh, this is an example from a company that we got uh, test samples, bead blasted fibro finish. Um, you can see here um, our A value. Um, there's also been talked about today about uh, the RV, the valleys and the peaks. Um, I have in my presentation, I look at the RZ and the RZ is actually, um, it's a measurement for the difference between the, the peaks and the, va the valleys and the peaks. So it gives you the height of the irregularities in the, in the surface, okay? Um, as you can see here, like I said before, for the fibro finish or tribal finishing, um, after the process, you see that the peaks are gone, but you still have the valleys. Uh, bead blasting, it limits the roughness. 
as you can see here, not as much as the fiber finish, but it's, it's lower than you have initially. So what was the project goal of, uh, for the Cornet project? That was let me look at, at coatings, maybe because if we want to go to functional products, we will in the end apply a coating on the surface. So maybe we can see if, if we can find coatings that are suitable to use uh, to fill up the roughness that you have and at the same time or maybe with a second coating on top give you the functionality that you need or that you want at the surface. So you're not removing a lot of material from the surface that you first build up. You just fill up after getting rid of the loose particles of course um, and then go to a, to a smooth flat surface. Um, a lot of things of course, like you see here, um, if you are going to use uh, coatings, um, you have to look at the viscosity, um, if you have complex products, um, you have to look at the solids loading, um, how much material is on the surface. If you have a very low solid uh, coating, then you will get something like this, because after getting rid of the evaporants in the, the solvents in the coating, then there's little solids available and you need a lot of coatings um, to, get, to get a flat surface. Um, then also which coating technique apply if you have a complex, coating, uh, complex product with inner channels. You cannot do a spray coating for instance. You need already a dip coating or something else uh, which, which maybe then limits or gives you some problems with coatings that can be applied. The coating speed, the number of layers, the drying method. You have thermal drying, you have UV drying, you have infrared drying. So a lot of things to look at. And that's what we did in the project. Um, the products that we looked most at are SLS products. Um, we first started using this system that they have here at Cirrus, uh, the EOS P319. Uh, the material we used was PA12. Um, layer thickness of the products was 120 micrometers. So what, we do, what did we do? We looked at the initial roughness and uh, for the test samples uh, that were initially parts that just plates 10 by 10 centimeters. Um, and <coughs> um, you can see here, some were put horizontal in the machine so that you have, uh, as you can see here, a low roughness because the samples are in plane when you are building up the product. We put some samples vertically so that you have a lot of uh, lines from building up. You can see already that uh, the average roughness is a lot higher than when you are, which is uh, reasonable. And then we had samples that were 45 under a, an angle of 45 degrees in the machine so that you had the stairs in the sample. There you also see that um, the roughness is uh, fairly high for these samples. So coating selection. Um, what coatings uh, can we use? Uh, we looked at a lot of coatings. I made a summary here. Um, it's in the slides that you have on your stick. I will not go through these, all of them. But uh, these are coatings that we looked at. Um, high solid coatings, it's up to 100% high solids. Like I said, if you have a lot of high solids, build off of the coating is very fast. Um, there's low shrinkage and it's UV cured coating because that is very fast curing. It's an instant curing. Problem of course is if you have complex products again, um, you can only UV cure the, the, the surfaces that are inside of the UV light. You cannot do it in internal channels, okay? So it depends on the product that you have, but it's a, it's a very good technology. Other one is a polyester gel coat has a high solids up to 80%, sometimes higher, but that's a little more difficult. It has excellent properties, but it's a three component product, um, very short pot life, uh, you need special equipment. So it depends if you want to use that. Uh, you really have to look at how to apply it and if you have uh, how to do the handling of this. Okay, polyurethane. Uh, solids about 45%, also excellent properties to chemical resistance, uh, hardness, uh, clarity, also a short uh, pot life and it also contains isocyanate, which is not that uh, good for the health, um, but it can be used, it's used in industry. Um, curing is fairly slow. 
Uh, and the last one, policy lasagne. Um, it's solvent-free, excellent adhesion. The only problem is um, it's a very thin coating, nanometers to micrometers. So you have to apply a lot of coatings to have a build-up. And if you know that you have a RZ roughness of 140 micrometers or higher, it takes a lot of time. But it's a good coating um, for impregnation and to close, close the surface if you, if you don't want, uh, for instance, uh, penetration of water, things like that. If you look at, at uh, a result for the high solid, uh, multiple layers. So what you see here is this is the initial roughness in RA. Um, and this is number of layers that we applied. Um, blue one is a sample with an angle of 45 degrees. Um, the, the yellow line here, that's a sandpapered surface, just to see if we would sand it manually. Uh, what, what is the roughness that we get. Because that's also one thing that we learned in the project is that if we ask the companies that were in the steering board of the, of the project, if we ask them what's the roughness that you would like to have in the end, that's a very difficult question. Because it also depends on what's the application. Um, and it's very difficult to say, well, that's, that's a roughness that we need, more or less, overall. So we had to take somewhere yeah, I guess from what, what, what can we reach or where do we want to go to. Um, as you can see, depending on the number of layers, one layer, two layer, you have a decrease in roughness, but then afterwards it more or less stays the same. It flattens out, so you, you can't get any better uh, roughness values anymore uh, with that type of coating. But still it's already uh, below, uh, yeah, around between 6 and 8 uh, RA. Now we looked at uh, another coating, um, it's a high build filler primer. Um, that's a sandable primer with a very high filling powder, power. Um, the interesting thing about this coating was that it, it's sprayable in, in several layers and it has a very short flash off time. So you can spray, wait a very short time, spray again, and you will not have uh, these uh, these runners that are on the surface or so, it just sprays layer after layer, it's very good. Fast layer buildup, uh, about 35 micrometers per layer. Um, a short curing time, you can let it cure in the air or just uh, heat it uh, or with infrared heating. Um, you can adapt it easily if you have uh, more difficult products or if you want to change the viscosity. Um, and it's very easily overcoatable because it's a primer. So if we look at, at this uh, here, uh, result here, this is the reference from sample that we started. It has an RZ of 140 micrometers. See after with four layers applied, which goes very fast, we go down to 70 RZ. And then we looked if we then do a polishing of one minute. So that's a very short polishing. Because it's a sandable primer, it's, it can be done very easily, much more easily than the original uh, PA12. It goes down up to uh, below 40 RZ. If you have seven layers, we are at 20 RZ. Seven layers, one minute wet polishing, we are below 10. And then with the top coat, that's the red one here, which also flows out very neatly, um, we have a very low roughness. So we have, in the end, a roughness RZ of five micrometers and an RA of less than one micrometer, which is good result for this, I think. We also looked uh, later in the project to new technology, Prodways, ProMaker P1000. Uh, same material, uh, layer thickness of 100 micrometers, um, but overall quality was uh, better than with the other machine. Uh, there we looked at, uh, at the vertical sample. And you remember in the, with the first machine, we were here around 100 and uh, 50, now we are here at 125, 112, so it's a, it's a better surface quality. But if you look at, at uh, coating of the samples, um, comparison with the old ones, so these are with the new machine, this is with the older machine, you see that when applying four layers of the primer and with the polishing that it doesn't make that much difference. 
you can see a difference if you have one layer or so, but if you have the four layers, um, it doesn't make a difference. <coughs> then we looked further at the influence of the sanding. Um, something that I will explain because these codes will come back in the next slides. Um, so what did we do? If, if you see a notation of one, that means that four layers of primer have been applied. That's it. And then we look at the result. If you see one S, that means four layers of primer are applied and we do a wet sanding, P800. Sample two is the first one, but again, after that, again, four layers of primer. And sample two S is twice four layers of primer, wet sanding, four layers of primer, wet sanding. Yeah. So if you look here at the sample where we look at, uh, at uh, a, a, a surface that was in plane with the printing, because you see the layer build up here that was in plane. Uh, initially, we had a high roughness still after applying the, the four layers, but then after sanding, it goes down uh, very significantly. Then after applying the next layers, there's not so much difference between the first one and the second one, but then with the sanding again, it goes down again uh, in below uh, 10 are set. Also, if we look at uh, results when we are in a, in, in a plane where we have these stairs and, and the printing lines visible, initially you can see the same effect. Um, the RZ goes down. It's lower uh, initially than in the previous one. Then with the sanding and the second sanding, um, it has a, a significant decrease in roughness on the surface. As I said, if we have very complex samples, um, we need to look at the dip coating. So there we also use the same primer to see what was uh, possible. Um, it's dipping speed 60 centimeters per minute. Uh, two identical samples, but with one sample, we had the printing lines horizontally when we did the uh, dipping. With the other one, we had them vertically, just to see if there would be a difference in, in uh, yeah, in the application of the layer and in the roughness that you will get in the end. Uh, two layers of coating were applied with five minutes of drying in between. Because these coatings are thicker uh, per layer than with uh, spray coating. That's why we had a longer drying time. No, it's very good visible. This one is with uh, printing lines horizontally. This is with the printing lines uh, vertically. 1A2, and you see that there is not so much difference in the results that we get. So we go here with, uh, with two layers from an RZ of 120 to 5.6, 6.5, RA 19.6 to 1.1, which is a very good result. Here you see the, uh, the profile measurements, uncoated, very rough surface. Then we have uh, with, yeah, this is with the primer and this is with the primer. Okay. Um, this was a sample that we chose, very, uh, a very specific sample that was here available at Cirrus uh, with internal channels inside the sample uh, just to see what would be the result. Um, because it was such a complex structure, we also did a thinning. Uh, we added 40% of thinner to the coatings to make it uh, better flowing. Um, and we dipped one layer. Also here, uh, I think it's visible. This is with, made with the EOS. Um, you can still see the, the printing lines um, here with the ProMaker because the quality of the sample initially is, is better already. Lines are much less visible than, than before. Yeah, this is a detailed uh, picture of, of the same surface. Um, this is when we have dipped uh, two layers. Um, still here are in some areas uh, lines visible. In this one, it's very it, it's a smooth surface. The only thing that you can see in this picture is that on the edges um, there is still some work to do. So that's something that we have to do manually because sometimes it's it's very difficult. Um, 
or you should be able to rotate these samples to prevent for this because it's thicker layers so here you have a little bit of runners but you can also say well the only thing I have to do is to work on on the edges a little bit because the rest of the surface is is, is coated well this one is then uh, reworked and then with a top coat added which has a color and a scratch resistance and uh, it's this is done um, it was a spray coating it says but it's dipped you can see that the internal channels are also coated it's the same uh, coating used for this for this project and I think the result looks very very good on this we also looked at uh, uh, a sp yeah spectacle arms uh, and and how do you call it in English um, the the brill the glasses, thank you. Uh, the glasses, uh, it's made by uh, 3D printing. Uh, we got sandblasted and fiber finished parts. Um, here also we use the, the same primer as discussed before with 20% uh, thinner. Uh, we did dipping uh, manually. Um, it says no corona treatment and that's also something that we looked at. I didn't discuss that before, but normally if you have plastics, you do a corona treatment to have a good adhesion. Now these surfaces are very rough, so there is a good mechanical adherence uh, with, with the coating. So you don't, we don't see a difference if you would do uh, a corona treatment beforehand or not. So the, the adhesion is very good. So we added two layers um, and no sanding. So these are the results. Um, you can see for the sandblasted part, um, we go from an RZ of 138 to uh, 4.6 and for the fibro finished part we go from 94 to 5.4 okay um, yeah something interesting um, what if, if you look at this um, these these samples came along with the samples I showed first I will go can I go back to the first? So these samples came along with, uh, as these were the test parts that came along with, uh, with the uh, spectacle arms and, and the glasses. Um, and you can see here, if you measure here, for instance, the fibro finishing, it's 6.5 RA. But if you measure it on the parts itself, it's much higher, it's about 10. So that also shows that uh, very well that depending on the product that you have, um, see it here, 10.3, that on the product that you have, that there is still a large difference um, what you can reach with the same process. And that's why it's so difficult to, if you have some uh, value of RA or roughness that you want to reach, you really have to look part by part what, what is the process and what needs to be done. These are the glasses. Uh, it's a fibro finished sample. Um, there we did the same pretreatment. We added the primer, manual dipping. Um, it's one layer uh, added, no polishing, and then we did a PVD coating. It's physical vapor deposition, a chrome coating, just to finish uh, the, the part and give it a, a nice look, just to show that it's possible to do that also on this primer coating. Um, I go through some cases now. Um, this was a typical sample that we made for uh, the project just to have different surfaces and to see how uh, the treatments would uh, be, what would be the roughness on these different surfaces and angles. Angles. Uh, in this one, we uh, looked also at PVD and, and metallization. So first we have the primer applied, then we do metallization, which is very short and gives you a sub-micrometer thickness of layer and then we do a top coat just to protect uh, that surface. So a primer is uh, applied and then uh, the polishing was done. So four layers of primer polishing, four layers of primer polishing, um, and then half of the piece is coated with PVD. So you can see the difference. Um, what you can see here is that in the end, if you do a lot of adding of layers, that the small features that you have here on this angle in the previous slide you can see that was um, these were small flat parts you lose them because of the 
adding the coating and then polishing it. It's very difficult to, to keep them. But for the rest, um, it's a very good result. Another one is done with, with the legger, um, where we did the same, um, but where we also did a half finish uh, with, uh, with the different coatings. I think in the slides that you have on the stick, you will see it better. Uh, this part, there is just a top coat applied. Um, on this part, there's a primer and a top coat. Um, and on the side, there's primer, uh, a polishing and a top coat. And you can also see at uh, roughness values that they go very low and that you get a high glossy result in the end. Also here, uh, again, you see that uh, you lose here the small features that you have on the, on the angled edge. Then we also looked at metallization. Um, there we worked together with Autotech in the project. Um, we did the smoothing of the surfaces uh, with, with different finishing, 1, 1S, 2, 2S, and this type of uh, product. And uh, the trial was to see if we also could uh, uh, do a plating of copper or nickel uh, or chrome with, with these uh, products that we have. This is an evaluation of the metallized sample, so we could apply it. Um, the adhesion was good. Um, here you see if there is no primer applied, what is the result and, and the roughness in the end. Um, vertical, uh, the vertical distance here is 25 micrometers. Here it's already lowered to 10 micrometers. And this is 5 micrometers, so it gets very smooth, uh, depending on the pretreatment that it had. This one is with, with uh, twice four layers and sanding. You can also see here for the different samples how the roughness decreases. The only thing is that if you look at it very visually um, or optically, here in the, in the side you can see it depending on the light. In the end, um, if you have imperfections in the surface, there's always still, uh, you can very little see that, that it has been a 3D printed part somewhere. Yeah. But in the end, we go to very low uh, roughness values. So if we compare uh, all different uh, <coughs> RZ values, then you see in this end, this is for all different uh, samples and, and tests we did, that without a coating, uncoated, we can go from 140 to vibro finishing, which is uh, RZ of 40. Um, with the coating, uh, we have a difference with the uh, uncoated, um, but we can go uh, to very low uh, results below 10 RZ, um, where we have combination of processes. And if we do coating and then sanding, which goes very quickly with this type of coating, we go to very low values below uh, RZ of uh, 5. So uh, the project showed that the application of a coating is a, is a fast way to level the roughness because it, it sends also very easily. Spray coating and dip coating apply. Um, there is no treatment necessary for PA12 uh, for good adhesion. Um, the sanding is advised uh, if you have optical or decorative purposes with your product. Um, sanding time is very limited and also uh, if you want to apply multiple coatings, um, we also looked at robotized uh, application of the coating, which is also possible. We can show that later if you are interested. Um, and like I said before, the choice of technique is very dependent on the, the product that you have and the quality that you want to reach. Um, so, and metallization is applicable with good adhesion. So like I said before, there are multiple technologies this one will not replace all the other, but it's an additional technology which you can use and which you have to take into account for different uh, surfaces. Thank you. <laughs>